Now that we are done with season one of ReZero, we can form video essays talking about season one. And hey, we got Mr. Kamalu here coming in with a video called I hated ReZero and was right. Ooh, the like to dislike ratio is not too good. And hey, everyone can have their own opinions, right? Whether or not I like something is none of your business. Everyone values different things. Therefore, they're going to come to different conclusions. I loved ReZero. Let's see what Mr. Kamalu has to say about ReZero Season 1. Hey, what's up? And welcome to my corner of the internet. Please like, comment, and subscribe. We got big goals around these parts. You know, we're trying to live life and do our thing and achieve something. I can't hear you. The first 10 seconds is you baiting the audience with ReZero rage bait. But then you're doing like your own plug 10 seconds in. How do you expect people that don't even know your channel to like give a fuck about you enough to sub? You start a video like this, people already click off. Straight up, you've already lost the attention. It's like 50% of the people that already clicked the video. So, okay, okay, okay. So I'm gonna be honest with you. I hated this anime I'm about to talk about. All right, And Why? I'm usually pretty good about knowing when I'm going to dislike something. Like I'm, I'm pretty- Why is this Japanese subs? Hold on. English auto-generate, let's see. Pretty good about that. I have a good understanding of my taste. Okay. And unfortunately, this anime, yeah, just doesn't do it for me. Why? But I tried. I gave Why it a it good do? one season try, and I think that's pretty good, right? If you've seen like like if you're gonna watch like fucking two episodes of the ReZero and say like you hated it, no, you don't know ReZero. You've only watched two episodes, and it was just was not your cup of tea. He's watched one season, so like. I mean, if you've seen one season of content, I've seen a lot of anime. I published over almost 3,000 videos in my channel right now. Of course, not all anime reactions, but for the past two years, I've watched a shitload of anime, and I think that ReZero sticks out to me in its own different tier. Maybe I'm glazing because of the recency bias. However, even if there is amazing anime in the isekai category, such as Tensura or Mushoku Tensei, ReZero just sticks out on a different tier here for me but like if you've seen one season why could you possibly think that like this is bad and i came away with some realizations i realized initially why i liked it and okay. why i dislike it now for different reasons so the anime i'm going to be talking about is three zero <laughs> <laughs> ah, so boom. Listen, man. Yeah, I know listening. that a lot of people like this anime. This is not. It's like a 6.5 out of 10. 6.5 out of 10. When you straight up were highlighting fucking <laughs> Tokyo Revengers early on. The, the different anime that you've shown us, I guess, kind of goes to your preferences. But like, you're going to say ReZero is a 6.5 out of 10. 6.5 out of 10 is like. What's a recent 6.5 out of 10 for me? Let's think about this season of anime right now, summer 2024. I think that Perry anime is like a 6.5. I think like, like these are the animes where it's just like, it's just mid. There's nothing amazing about it. There's nothing terrible about it. It's just mediocre slop, like the Perry anime. Failure Frame honestly is pretty fucking mid as well. What, what other anime is like super mid right now? These are like the 6 to like 6.5. I don't think these are even 7s. These are like fucking around the 6 point somethings. Like, what else? Like, nobody remembers me? That's like a 5 to 6 somewhere around there. And like, those animes, compared to ReZero, it's not even the same fucking media. ReZero is on another fucking tier of like a plane of existence. A 6.5 out of 10? Well, it depends on his like value system again, right? Sometimes people just hate the Isaac Island. Sometimes people fucking despised the regression loops like the the entire point of what ReZero is good for some people hate those elements and that would make sense as to why it could be a 6.5 out of 10. Not a bad anime like I'm just gonna get that out like it's pretty this is animated very well. I don't even think that the animation quality of this anime is that good straight up I'll say it ReZero season one the animation quality it's not the best I've seen. I think that Maki and Heroin right now, I think that Cloverworks Elusive Samurai, Roshitere Oshinoko, those shows airing right now, of course there's an eight year gap. I do not think that the 2016 version of White Fox's season one of ReZero 
is like peak animation. It's pretty good. But it's not on another level. Yeah, exactly. Wistoria. There's so many different animes where the animation is objectively better. The fantasy world where we get to experience with Natsu Subaru. And this is written... Natsu Subaru. Oh, of course. My favorite character. By an Motherfucker, are we watching Fairy Tale right now? Straight up, I'm gonna put that on the screen. This is an adventure, dark fantasy isekai. This is not a bad anime. It's just not the anime for me. Okay, why? So boom, first and foremost, I'm gonna compliment it. This is- All you've done is just play random fucking clips of scenes. What are, you, what are you trying to say here right now? I don't get this. Like, why are you just playing this fucking show? You've wasted one minute and 43 seconds just saying, it's not a bad anime. It's not a bad anime. Random anime clips. Give me your fucking opinions on why this is like not your favorite. So boom, first and foremost, I'm gonna compliment it. This is an actually light, vibrant, and beautiful world. Light, vibrant, beautiful world, but the fucking clip you're showing me isn't a loot seller where I can't see shit. That is interesting and episode to episode you enjoy. What does that even mean? It's interesting and you just enjoy. Tell me specifically about the anime, the mechanics that they use that you don't like or like. Experiencing the little pieces that we get from it. And our main character, Natsuki Subaru, basically gets isekai and... This world is different. It's odd. And he seemingly has no powers or any real strengths other than his wit and his mind. And unfortunately, he has like darkness powers, like an, a darkness like affinity that basically makes his powers of that like specialty. And darkness powers. Yes. Shama. Shadow element. Yes, this is correct. We hardly ever see it. See, what I disliked about ReZero was I didn't want to watch an Isekai. Second. Isekai about someone just literally dying, re experiencing a story, dying, re experiencing a story. See, this is the thing you don't get. What I don't like about ReZero is about dying and re experiencing a story and dying and re experiencing the story. Because of this regression mechanic, you're able to go into different ways that a main character could never go into. This flawed character that is overcome by his sins with pride, greed, envy, wrath, all these different things, he keeps fucking up. And by doing so, you get to see the flaws of a main character and then see him learn from those lessons and grow. The level of depth and complexity of Natsuki Subaru is heightened because of this regression mechanic, and there's been no other isekais. That's not really true. I think that Rudy is pretty deep, but most isekais are most power fantasy shows, right? There is like this perfect static level that you're at and he just overcomes everything. Because Natsuki Subaru fucks up thanks to the regression runs, he can learn from those mistakes and be better. And not only that, there is this beautiful poetic representation of this character. Someone so egotistical, someone so eager to prove other people's wrong and make them understand his value. However, due to his powers, when he fails, nobody remembers those runs or the sacrifices that he made. And there's something so compelling. It's almost like a fucking curse, right? Someone just like Natsuki Subaru that has this power, yet nobody can ever understand. Even that, remember that one run? When Julius had to kill Subaru, bro? No one's gonna fucking remember that run. No one's going to remember the heroics of that run, except us, the audience. And he continues to push forward. I think that the regression mechanic is the thing that highlights this anime beyond other isekais. I'm sure there's other regression isekais as well. But due to the mechanic, you're able to see such an in-depth characterization of this brand known as Natsuki Subaru. Here's my thing about, like, isekais. I feel like isekais... And it's not just about Subaru 2, right? It's all about the side characters too, exactly. Rem, Ram, like, Arc 2... You, we never knew that Rem was like that until that episode 7. It's just like a fucking shock that, holy shit, all those runs, we've been fucking up, right? All these different things can happen because of the regression. Mix and mash different ideas. But here's the problem with ReZero. What? I already, like, have seen an anime with this concept done way better. Yeah? What is it? The dying and coming back, dying and coming back. I'm going to assume summertime rendering because he showed summertime rendering clips in the beginning. And then having better like outcomes and like figuring out things like ReZero was kind of boring for like the first. Boring, really? Just like a lot of episodes. At
No, the first episode immediately hooked me in. There was no other isekais that grabbed my attention like that. The level of immersion was fucking unreal by the end of episode 1. And that's why by episode 3, the Reinhardt versus Elsa shit, I actually care about that. Because this is like the Sword Saint, Knight of Knights, Reinhard von Austria, a descendant of a family just cladded in Sword Saint. Then you have Elsa from the Northern Province, the Bowel Hunter, the knife with the characteristics from the Northern Elements, Dark Hair, the pair skin. The level of depth that the show goes to kind of show and portray different characters, it just makes it feel like it's such a vibrant and a dynamic world where they're not NPCs. It feels like Natsuki Subaru is the NPC getting involved with a bunch of actual full in-depth characters that exist alive in this world. Actually, I'm not gonna lie to you. Like, it didn't kick up towards, like, the last, like, let's just say... I, I want to be, like, I want to be generous and be, like, the last 50 episodes like last 15 episodes so you're telling me well if freezer has 25 episodes you're telling me up till episode 10 basically arc one and two none of that shit mattered to you why though because he's seen regression shit done better in other anime i've seen summertime rendering it's a great anime i don't think it comes to even close to what natsuki super has to go through I think that the main character in Summertime Rendering, I understand that he has his own limitations as well, the challenges that he goes through. It's not even fucking close, bro. The level of how they analyze Subaru's like, psychology through these regressions as he breaks down. In the beginning, he seems like a prideful, egotistical guy who just gets through everything in Arc 1. And then in Arc 2, you get to see more of him just having a mental collapse and trying to figure out what he's supposed to do. But it's so ironic that him trying his best is what's causing all these issues. And he realizes that he needs to, for, you know, give up all these uh, desires of proving himself and being overcome by pride and ask people around him like Betty for help. And by doing that, he understands what he did wrong and overcomes that. And he, it's a beautiful, beautiful development of this flawed character known as Natsuki Subaru. But like, if you think that like by the end of arc, even by the end of arc one, like really nothing captures you? Arc two, like episode seven didn't do anything for you. I just, it's kind of crazy. Like, it did not. Like, the first 10-ish was just like, ugh. What? But at first, you... But why? Why is it ugh? You're not giving me an actual explanation talking about the specific numbers. You're just saying, I've seen Regression do better, but I've seen Summertime Rendering. I've seen ReZero. And of course, you're capping and so am I. These are just our opinions. But I feel like I'm giving direct examples of why ReZero is better. This guy is just giving blanket statements. You don't necessarily feel that way because you're just like, okay, what? we're getting to understand the parameters, the rules, and understand the different reasonings for things that are going on and what Subaru is experiencing. And man, I I wanted to like this anime. I wanted to give it a chance, but I just have always known ReZero was not the anime for me because it felt like just straight struggle. Like if That's the whole point. <laughs> Here we have it. That's it. That we don't have to even rest watch the rest of the video. We don't have to watch the rest of the video. That's it. It took him four minutes to actually give a fucking reason on why it's bad. And this is the whole point. A lot of people come into watching animes wanting a powerful character, main character that's so perfect that can solve everything. I've seen those animes. And you know what? Often those animes are amazing in a comedic tone. For example, Cautious Hero. Funny as fuck. The main character is OP and just solves everything in a very funny way, right? Irregular Magic High School is not really funny. Onisama is like a fucking Jesus Christ-like character. And it's this template of creating hype by having other people look down on a genius, even though they have no understanding of how strong he actually is. But those kind of series, it's fun for a bit. But you quickly realize that, hmm, there's no struggle. There's no actual challenges. The character is so perfect. They just overcome everything so easily and all right, that's fun. The thing about ReZero is that this is a 17 year old kid who's a neat. He did nothing with his life back in Japan. He wasted it, but he's so prideful. He's very arrogant and he wants to prove everyone wrong, but he continues to fuck up. And by fucking up, he understands and learns from his mistakes and becomes a better person. And through this system of having a flawed, relatable, normal character, you get to see so much more out of a show rather than just a dude that just shows up and just handles business. There's a time and place for everything. But I really appreciated how ReZero showed how much the main character struggles. And through those struggles, we understand more about his flaws and what he can do. He continues to learn and better. And we want to root for him. We want to cheer for him. There's been no other episode, uh, sorry, an, an anime where I've seen 
Natsuki Subaru make the face of... Hold up. Let me show you real quick. This was the craziest shit. Let's go to the ReZero playlist, and I have 102 videos by now. <laughs> That's crazy, 102 videos, but... Of the tier list, of, uh, sorry, of the uh, videos, this face. I have never seen an anime where the main character is capable of making a disgusting face like this. And that episode was hard to watch. It was disgusting to watch, to see the main character just fuck up in the most atrocious way. But that's the beauty of this show, that Tape has gone out of his way to portray the main character as such a, like a rock bottom moment to portray these kind of faces. And for us to see that and to hate him, but then actively understand why he's like that. And we get to see him get his redemption. And it's beautiful. It's amazing what this main character is able to do. I've never seen a main character in Isekai, let alone an anime, where they're supposed to be just perfect. But look at this guy. And this is just raw. This is truly raw emotions coming out. It's something that's so relatable too. I'm watching it. I hate him. But I can also relate to it. I feel like I've been in those situations too. And that's why I love ReZero so much. The struggle and seeing the struggle and overcoming it felt so like unnerving and uninteresting and it felt like it was rinse and repeat of Subaru getting like his ass kicked and then asking for help and then something going wrong and then getting his ass kicked and yes you're reducing it down to him fucking up learning from his mistakes and moving on then fucking up but you can also reduce any anime in that way too this is a very disingenuous way of summarizing ReZero right now. And then repeating it, and then asking for more help, but in a different way. The anime is so repetitive. Like, What other anime isn't repetitive when you can reduce it like this? I can literally bring up any fucking other anime, like Summertime Rendering. What does he do? He goes there, he fucks up, he retries. He goes there, he learns, he gets there, he fucks up, retries. Like, see? I can just do that with every anime, too. You're just... Pointing out the, the nature of a regression show. Jesus Christ, was it repetitive? But I will give it to them. I will give it to them. Things would repeat, but it will repeat, but it would have different animation with the repetition. So I will give that to them. That it's not about the different animation with the repetition. It's about understanding what he did wrong. In the first run of Arc 2, he thought that he was getting along with Rem and Ram by trying so hard. But what we didn't realize was that he was so suspicious. And with each death, his witch's miasma stacks up to the point where Rem gets so fucking heated, episode 7 happens, which is what you're showing me right now. Each run is different, and it's very strategic and intent. It's very, there's like an intent in each run. It's not just like generic repeated over and over again. There is a purpose in each run and what we learn and what we're trying to be better on next time. That definitely broke up the monotony of the anime. I will 100% give them that. Like, you don't even understand the purpose of a different animation. Right? You are straight up saying, I'm bored watching and repeat these runs, so thank God there was different animation. You're not even listening to the story. You're not even trying to understand what the show was trying to tell you with these different animations. ReZero is one of those animes that takes the idea of showing more than telling, and I think that's what made it so uninteresting. You do understand that this phrase, show don't tell, is what you're supposed to do in media? I'm not sure if you've, you're misunderstanding this line, but quite often the biggest criticism of show is that rather than showing the audience of this deep and interesting world with different characters, rather than just explaining everything to you, it's up to the audience to try to figure out what's going on with each run as they show a little bit more and sprinkle a little bit more hints. I don't think you truly understand what it means to show, don't tell. I think that you're taking a platitude and fucking up the interpretation. That's what made it so uninteresting to me. One of the things I like about fantasy is fantasy... Yeah, one thing that you like about fantasy is that you want the show to just tell you everything without you having to think about this show, without having to theorycraft about the show. You just want to be spoon-fed all the fucking information. I think that's one of the most boring ways of consuming media. It's, the mo it's, it's just... There's no immersion. Everyone is, everything is just told to you. What I like in a fantasy show is to be just dropped in and to be immersed by the story just showing us things, right? What happens immediately when we're dropped into the Kingdom of Lagunica, right? Natsuki Subaru is 
just bewildered and trying to figure out what's going on. He meets this, ha you know, this half elf girl, but she says she's a half elf and she tells us that she's Satella. But beyond that, we're left to think, why is this bad, right? Why does Puck say, hmm, Satella is bad? See how it didn't tell us exactly why? And then for the rest of the episode, I'm trying to think, why is it bad? By the end of the run, you realize, holy shit, we're not supposed to say Satella. That's the name of the Witch of Envy. See how if they immediately told you right in the beginning, Puck's saying, Oh, Emilia, that's the name of the Witch of Envy. Why are you role-playing as the Witch of Envy and telling the main character that you are the Witch of Envy? There's, there's no fucking point. You're trying to fucking appreciate the show but you're getting immersed. And show don't tell is the perfect way of doing storytelling. I think fantasy needs a little bit of narration. I'm going to be honest with you. I like... Needs a little bit of narration. I think that this is a skill issue. That you are such a goo goo gaga unga boonga brain that you can't follow the story. Man, this might be actual skill issue, man. This, this straight up actually might just be a skill issue. Like he doesn't understand why ReZero is good because he's genuinely too slow to understand. Which seems very cringe and gatekeep to say such a thing. But based on what he's said so far throughout the last five minutes, I can't help but think this way. Being shown things, but I also like being told. ReZero felt so encapsulated in Subaru's experience that it almost felt like the world did not matter and the setting had no real... In what do you mean? Just because the story... What do you mean that ReZero is encapsulated? You mean encapsulated by Subaru's what? Experience that it... But see how ironic it is? You're talking about how ReZero's story is encapsulated in Subaru's experience. I'm not completely sure what you mean by that. But let's just assume that <clears throat> the story is from the main perspective of Natsuki Subaru and his regressions, and therefore the other moments did not matter. But you know what we're showing right now? This is the backstory of Ram and Rem, of how the horns were lost. You know why that shit matters? Because Subaru told Rem that you're demonically possessed. Do you like Onis? That was the first moment that Rem smiled and gave us some sort of affection. And because the story was told from Subaru's perspective, and we're trying to understand more of Rem and Rem by that, and we even told them about the blue Oni and the red Oni story, we're trying to always think about what happened, right? What happened between them in the past? Then we see the backstory here of the witch's cult attacking. And notice how the witch's cult also is directly related to what Rem said in episode 7, about how... You stench, your, your stench of the witch's miasma is so thick, yet you're acting as if you know, nothing is wrong. Because the story is encapsulated in Super's experience, so much more of the world is vivid and dynamic, and we get to see exactly what's going on. Like, you're directly contradicting yourself by even showing me this scene. The world did not matter, and the setting had no real interest, because we never really found out anything. And what do you mean we didn't find out anything? We found out a lot of things. We found out that back in the past, the cult members were attacking Rem and Ram's village, the Oni village, right? And who saved them? And then Ram lost her horn, and that's why Rem still has it. And then Roswell also shows up at the very end, which makes us think that, holy shit, is he related to the cult? Was it just a fucking random occurrence? There's so much that we find out. Episode to episode, we get like morsels of information, which some people like that. So I care more about this dragon thing than most characters. I mean, Patrash is great. Which some people like that. Some people do like that. This is a personal preference. But for me personally, I wanted a little bit more interest into the world and I wanted to be introduced. I didn't want to. That's crazy that, like, th of all the isekais that I've consumed, ReZero is the world that I'm the most immersed in due to the way of storytelling. But it's the exact opposite for this guy. It'd be just smacked up every five minutes and then somehow I'm supposed to like care about what this story is going through and like don't even get me started on the characters like I okay. promise you I didn't give a fuck about half the cast wow. for literally most of the story until like Why? literally towards the end of the anime I did Why? not care like and it wasn't like what was bad that was happening to our characters did not matter it was just there was not a love there was not enough care given for me to care about our what does that mean Give me a specific character and example and why you don't care and give me a different example from a different enemy of why it did matter. This entire video is just obscure, just generic, vague posting. I don't think you even know what you're trying to say right now. Our characters. And also, best girl is Rem.
flat out. Like, that was the only girl that got enough exposition or care for me to even be interested enough to be caring enough about. This story felt so lazily chopped together, and I feel as... Lazily chopped together. When each run has a specific purpose of in mind of what they're trying to teach us, and we piece together. Like, here's an example, right? Remember during Arc 3 when we were at rock bottom? And we were filled with wrath. In that run, the wrath was overriding our pride. And we go to Crucian, we fuck up. We learn more about diplomacy there. Understanding that if you want to have an agreement with somebody, if you want other people's help, you need to give them a reason, right? And then what do we learn from Anastasia? The art of the deal, negotiating. Understanding that the negotiation is all about the preparation beforehand and dangling what the other side wants in front of them. Priscilla about the servant-master relationship, about having some pride, how you represent your master, and you're fucking disgusting for even doing that. And in the next run, he learns from this and actively implements the solutions that he learned from because he fucked up in the last run. And that's the beauty. That's the growth. Each run has a specific intent in mind to show us more about the world and more about Natsuki Subaru. So I fail to see how this is lazily chopped together. I feel like, if anything, it's very specific in how it's chopped together for a specific reason. As though this was just not really that interesting. And I was very confused on why people love this anime so much. Like this anime just felt like I was just watching a guy like delve further and further into madness. Yes. Yes. That's the whole point. A 17 year old neat being thrown into this isekai world and given these tremendous ordeals to overcome and him fucking up in the most relatable way because he is a fucking loser. And to overcome that and recognize that and improve, it's a compelling main character. And like... <laughs> like, like, do you even understand the meaning between Julius here and Natsuki Subaru? Like, do you understand what happened here? <laughs> I don't know. I've seen this concept done so much better in other... Like, what was the whole point of even showing Julius versus Natsuki Subaru there? What is the purpose of these clips? You're introducing random clips here and there for no fucking reason. What was that? They're animes. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Like, this is not... Like, I've seen dying coming back, dying coming back, and trying to save people, and trying to, like, convince people. And Subaru, listen, I understood why he would react the ways he would. I understood why he would do the things that he would. And I understand why he was slowly breaking down slowly, but surely okay. throughout our episodes. I completely okay. got it. But it was such a rinse and repeat. And the speeches between characters just did not hit at Rinse and repeat. This is the first time he's ever done this. Before, he's never done this before. This is a special moment where the mask really falls off. And he lashes out on Amelia. It's one of the most impactful moments to show us exactly what kind of character Natsuki Subaru is. What do you mean rinse and repeat? Give me examples of where the rinse and repeat happened. Again, you can't make these generic claims. And then never show me a direct example to compare to. And for us to just understand, like, it's perfectly fine to have these opinions, right? For sure, everyone has their different opinions. I started the video off by saying, listen, everyone's value system is different. That's totally fine. But if you want to have a genuine conversation, you need to compel the audience with your points. But you just make generic points and you play random clips of anime that has nothing to do with your points and expect the audience to understand what you're saying? After the third freaking time, bro, it just didn't. And like, I was, I genuinely gave it like the college try for ReZero. I really did. I was open-minded to the fact that I've never watched it. I understood what was the premise and what was going on, but it just felt uninteresting and like wow. it showcased why isekai is dying it i don't think isekai is dying if anything isekai is still on an upward trend every season there's like 30 garbage isekai being pumped out because the industry knows how popular isekai is i think this guy just doesn't like isekai stories then right i i don't know it showcased why isekai cannot isekai Unfortunately, it gets boring. <sighs> Isekai, unfortunately, gets boring. The writing becomes so still so quickly. Why though? Why though? Explain why. I personally sometimes find the initial start great, fun, and even interesting. But say, for instance, they go on longer for six months. I struggle to keep finding a reason to continue reading or watching. Why though? That's just, see, you don't give me any point. You just say it's boring. Why is it boring? The writing becomes so stale. Give me, give me an example of when the writing became stale. 
I feel like the more I read or watch ReZero, it's like a beautiful onion layer. Every layer I peel back by watching more and understanding more the cut content, the more deep and rich each moment becomes. In fact, if I did a rewatch, I bet that I could appreciate the story even more because that's how beautiful the show is, right? I think that Isekai is fun for the moment, but there's no staying power in ReZero as a top tier. There's no staying power. ReZero is a top tier Isekai, but it does not escape the issues that the genre has as a whole. But you don't even know what the issues are. What are the issues? That it got boring? The writing became stale? Can you point out the specific moments when this got boring and got stale compared to other genres of anime? where it was not boring and stale. See, just random, generic, vague, blanket statements without any substance to back up these claims. So how are you supposed to, how am I supposed to be, sit here and take this guy's fucking video at face value? Uh, work as a long-term genre. Like, this is gonna be gone in the next coming years because like, it's repetitive and it feels monotonous and it gets boring. I don't care if it's your opinion. But your opinion is fucking dog shit. This is straight up the opinion of a fucking caveman with the illiteracy of a grade two year old. Straight up. You don't even know how to spell unfortunately. I'm sorry, bro. You don't even know how to spell unfortunately. And that spelling mistakes is not that big of a deal. But the more I watch this video, from the beginning it already seemed like you had a misunderstanding of what the story is supposed to be. You don't even recognize that the struggles is the reason why the show is so beautiful. You continue to give me random blanket statements on why the isekai genre or the show is bad, but there is no direct comparison to anything else you've watched that was actually good, or nor do you actually go in depth into specific moments of reason why it's bad. Like, I don't get it. Like, this is gonna be gone in the next coming years because like- Next coming years? July 2024. Motherfucker, we're getting a new season of ReZero coming up pretty soon. This is- like, if this is a cheap rage bait to get views, you're a fucking retard. You're a failure of a content creator. You're a fucking embarrassment. And you think that you can get views by rage baiting? For sure you can. And people are going to fucking dunk on you, right? But if you came in here wanting a genuine conversation, I'm totally down to listen and try to understand why people make these opinions. But so far... This guy, I think, is just rage baiting. Straight up. Just L video. Like, it's repetitive. And it feels monotonous. And it you know what's repetitive? Your entire claims. This entire video is repetitive and monotonous. There's no fucking substance. You don't even know why this show is bad. It's boring. Again, even if you just hide behind this is just my opinion, your opinion is fucking monkey ass, bro. <laughs> This powerlessness got boring too. What? You expect a 17 year old kid that has no fucking powers other than a fucking flip phone and a busted ass shamak to fight against a fucking archbishop of sloth in this moment when he's also having a mental breakdown? Don't you realize that the whole powerlessness of the run in episode 15 is why people claim it to be one of the best episodes in anime? And that's one of the issues with it. At first, I thought I hated ReZero simply because the character, the main character was weak and had no real, like, will of his own. Though, he is smart enough to try out some ideas and brave enough. I will give that to him. He definitely tried out some things and was brave yes. enough to put himself in danger. Numerous moments dealing with the white... Absolutely right. Over and over, Super does show us his ingenious strategies and gambling. Well, dealing with like the witch and the assassin, there were sure. various moments where Subaru was like, he was that guy. But the problem with Subaru was, it felt as though he was supposed to be this sniveling loser that I was. Yes. Yes, he's so close. He's so close. He's right there. How can one person be so close? Yet missed the point. Like, like, that is the entire point. For this Isekai to have a main character that's just not a god from the beginning. To be a sniveling loser. Yes, he is an absolute trash loser in this episode. To lash out an Amelia. To call her. Uh, to say that you have a debt you can never pay back. But you realize that these are all the insecurities and projections of Subaru's insecurities, right? The whole point of this was for Subaru to acknowledge that at the end of the day, I wasn't doing this for you. I was doing this for me. 
And at the end of arc 3, after all those failed runs and understanding what he was lacking, he understands what he was missing. And to finish the season off, Subaru tells Amelia, Amelia, back then, you were right. I wasn't doing this for you. I was doing this for me. But at the end of the day, I still want to be by your side. And it's a beautiful development of this character. And the complexities and the depth of Natsuki Subaru is just heightened yet again. And makes me actually give a fuck about the story. Give a fuck about this character. Rather than a situation where he was just perfect from the beginning. Handled business just nonchalantly. Where's the fun in that? It's just boring. Well... Thank you, Kazu Man, for the tier one sub, man. Thank you so much. Even though, like, they don't give us more things to care about him for, like, it just, it just felt poorly written, and that poorly written. I'd say that this video is poorly written. It's one of the biggest issues with Rezero for me. It all felt so poorly written. What does that mean? What does that mean? You can't just say that and not give me an example. Why is it poorly written? And it felt as though that everything was mashed together, but did it make no sense? It was mashed together in a beautiful way. The chopped up in nonsensical ways. No, it's... Every run... <laughs> Thank you, Second History, for the tier one sub, man. Honestly, if you take Subaru out of the story and you just gave us, like, Satella and some of the other stuff and, like... Then there's no point of the story. The entire driving point of the story is to see this flawed main character with this power regression that's just this eternal cycle of suffering, try to figure out how is he going to overcome himself. And that is the whole purpose of the story. The election and the witch cult and all that, I guarantee you ReZero will be just as interesting. I almost can get- This is just elitist reviews on my anime list that have no comparison of the three. I, I, again, like, how- this is- is this even elitist? I just feel like this video is just like a huge self-report on this guy's base level of understanding media, literacy, critical thinking. But like, I want to give him the benefit of the doubt that like, he's just rage baiting, right? He's getting desperate. He wants to make it big on YouTube. He sees that ReZero is going to be having another season soon. Therefore, he made a video to intentionally piss people off. If that's the case, then fine, right? Just, just admit it. It's a shameless hustle. Get the bag, right? But if you're actually this retarded, man, that's, that's embarrassing. Guarantee it. If you just take Subaru out of it, I think the story would be very interesting, especially the way ReZero goes from gruesome, goes to very tactical, goes to being a bit of a light magic system that just like happens and we experience it. And then what does that even mean? It goes from gruesome to tactical to goes to light magical system that it just like happens. I'm listening to what you're saying, but like none of it is making sense. To being a bit of a light magic system that just like happens and we experience it. And then the different characters, I get the one of the things that sucks about Isekai is like, if you take that main character out of it, the story's pretty much the same, roughly. Oh, this time he spelled unfortunately correct. ReZero unfortunately forces Subaru to be the catalyst for these events. Do you not understand the, pur pur like the purpose of a protagonist? Like, he is the driving factor. He is the catalyst. Y yes, that's the whole point. But he doesn't have to be... Y but he doesn't have to be. You can write things differently, and Reezer could just be a fantasy election monster hunting betrayal show that I think would be loads more interesting. I mean, I'm not denying like this. I'm not denying that there's like different... I'm not sure what you mean by monster election, but like... Without Subaru in it, for sure the world would be interesting, but like, I think this show is even better because, again, of Natsuki Subaru being the self-insert character from the audience where you see all the flaws that you can relate to and see him fuck up and just have these moments where he doesn't even seem like a main character and then learn from his mistakes and get better. And it's very inspiring. It's very motivational. Except without some of the, like, interventions of the main Isekai character. <laughs> This was his moment. I felt this motherfucking part. But like, I don't think you, under you truly understand the moment. Because like, you only care about this because Natsuki Subaru is again standing on business. And you have the attention span and the intellect of a caveman. So you think this is hype. But you don't know why this is hype. Because you don't understand the past runs that took to get to the White Whale. You don't understand that Natsuki Subaru, the weakest person, was able to rally up and 
mobilize the white whale subjugation forces by learning from his mistakes and understanding what Krush might want, and then to team up with Anastasia and Russell Fellows, and then to have Wilhelm have his revenge being the driving factor why Krush wanted to help out. Everything built up to this moment due to the regressions and the past fuck-ups. It's not just this random power fantasy moment. There is a specific reason as to why this is really hype. But I don't think you truly understand that because you just want main character to do OP things. But the story literally would not change much without Subaru. Like, I What do you mean? They would have never found the white whale. Without Subaru, none of this is possible. If you think about from the perspective of other people in this show, Natsuki Subaru is a genius strategic uh, leader. He is this godlike being that is always 10 steps ahead. Without Natsuki Subaru, all this shit wouldn't happen. Because he exists, the story is enriched. I could totally watch this anime without Subaru. And I think I would actually be way more interested instead of it trying to do this rinse and repeat death fan. Do you not understand the point of a regression? I don't think you understand that rinse and repeat of like, that's the whole point. <laughs> regression, you've seen summertime rendering. Why are you saying rinse and repeat? It's rinse and repeat there too. You can just reduce it like that. Fantasy where we're like, we keep experiencing traumas. And like, unfortunately, I've watched a lot of anime that try to like showcase the degradation of a human being. And unfortunately, you can only go so far. Maybe I'm just that traumatized, but like you can only go that far for me. What are you talking about? <sighs> That's pretty much it. Now, I did have some other problems. You can only go so far. That's pretty much it. Well, I can't even hear you because of the anime clip that's playing in the background is louder than your voice. But some of that washed away when the good moments of this anime came. What's the good The moments? heartfelt moments, the speeches, the romance, the, the moments where it felt as though we were actually having wins. And that could... So you just want just the good parts, right? You don't care anything about the struggles. The struggles is bad. But you don't even realize why the good parts are good. That's the thing. If everything is good, then nothing is good. Have you seen The Incredibles? What does Syndrome say? If everyone is super, then no one is super. Having Natsuki Subaru be there, fuck up, and get to the bo rock bottom, and then having Wilhelm and Krush get on one knee and say, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. The lows are as low as the highs are as high. I don't think you understand why this is a triumphant moment. Could also be one of the problems with this anime for me was it felt as though it was so trying its hardest not to be a win for character. This wild white whale part was the best writing of the entire 25 episodes. It had everything. It wrote Subaru a seemingly useless character perfectly, genuinely used everything well. Characters, not motivation, ideas, shows the death stuff pointless and can be used without being repaired. But like, you just see the end product. Like, I don't see. see you're so close again, but you don't, you fail to recognize why the white whale part was so great. It's because of the rock bottom we hit and the lessons that we had to learn for Subaru to realize how to even get to this point. That's the entire point. You just see the pop off and you love it. Again, I think that again, like if you're rage baiting, go for it. But like, are you actually this retarded? There's no way, right? and it just wanted to show suffering which could have been the mo of the author but my problem was overall this anime lacked anything of interest besides just what being like what death struggles and a weak main character that wasn't hardly ever thrown a bone and i'm all that's and, and you know what that's a crazy thing right what you described here death struggles and a weak main character that wasn't hardly ever thrown a bone that's the entire point bro that's the entire premise, bro! To have this dude try to survive in this fantasy world as a useless piece of shit and to overcome these impossible tasks, that's the whole part. That's the entire purpose! You're so close, but you're so far! Oh, and I'm all for making our characters grow for the plot, but Jesus Christ, this was almost like... But with all that being said, I feel how I feel about ReZero. I don't know if I'm gonna watch the second season. I was interested enough and I liked how when we got away from the death and the repetition, it seemed like a good normal anime. Again, if you get away from the death and repetition as in he just wants to see the perfect runs. 
He has no understanding of why the perfect runs are even there in the first place. He has no respect or love for the buildup and the suffering Subaru have to go through to get there. You just want the happy, happy parts. And like, the worst part is, you're so stupid, you can't understand why this is. Because like, you're using this repetition as like, the reason why it's bad, but it's the reason why it's good. And you can't even recognize that. The more I think about it, again, like, is this just the biggest brain rage bait video? Or is he truly a monkey, a primitive caveman stuck in the evolution phase? I'm not sure. Genuinely, I thought this anime had a lot of potential when it decided to continue the story. And we knew a little bit more rules and got a better understanding and it almost made it easier to continue the story instead of that constant repetition and that almost unnervingly need to re-help him find his resolve and go back to doing things i don't know it it lost me a lot and yeah i know that you don't know i you're definitely lost it i'm, I'm very apparent you're very lost and you're very unaware of what's going on i'm gonna be honest with you if this video gets a lot of attention I'm gonna be honest with you, if it's like controversial enough, I might watch the second season and finish the third within like... Nah, bro, you're just gonna do that. Like, you're gonna make another Rage Bay video. ...the next two weeks, and then come back to you guys and really give a review of ReZero. But first season, I need a break. I'm gonna just take a little walk away from this anime because like, it was so trying to watch. It wasn't bad when it was good, but when it was bad, it was just like, ugh, I have to watch this. Again, just <laughs> doesn't understand why the good parts are good just want to see the perfect runs without having under any context of what it took to get there but anyway please like comment and subscribe do you love ReZero? is my opinions of ReZero wrong it could be everyone has their own opinions right you can say the earth is flat that's perfectly fine but other people will call you a retard for it right whenever you make content online you're putting yourself out there and everyone has their own different takes that's perfectly fine but what i really respect and appreciate from people that have controversial takes is that they have the logic and a win condition deeply rooted in reality. They give direct examples of what they liked they didn't like and compare with different anime to further illustrate their point. But this entire video was you probably rage beating or just actually being retarded, not understanding the whole point of why the show is good. The whole part of why you say it's repetitive and monotonous, that is the entire purpose. To have this guy go through these struggles and fuck up and be better and then pursue greatness. That is the entire premise of the anime. You're so close, but you don't get it. It genuinely could be, but that's just how I felt. I knew I wasn't going to like this and I was proven pretty. You knew you were going to like it, but you watched 25 episodes. I don't think this is the behavior of a normal person. I think that most people would have dropped this shit immediately. Oh, Mr. It's Kiss, what's going on, my man? Pretty much right. This will never be on my like top 10 or anything. And I probably am going to be so excited once I've finished watching it. But I watched it and I can say that I gave an anime that I wasn't interested in a try. With I mean, shit, he watched 25 episodes, man. That's that's honestly, that's that's quite the hustle you got to put in, right? Not a 12 episode season, 25 episodes. He sat there and watched it all. And this is the opinion he came up with. With all that being said, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. Again, if I'm right or wrong, or you want me to keep watching this to make more videos about it, please let me know because I will. There's nothing about being right or wrong. It's all about having a genuine conversation with genuine takes, right? I get it. Everyone wants to be a content creator. Everyone wants to get views, right? Who doesn't want to fucking watch, watch anime and talk about it and make money? But sometimes people see that it's easy to get views by just being volatile, right? If I click on this guy's channel, is this video just basically all just rage bait? <laughs> I watched ReZero again. <laughs> I hit a ReZero and it was right. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, it just feels like... This is a very cheap attempt at rage baiting. And sure, you're going to get views. But guess what? You're going to get fucking dunked for it. Rage baiting to get views? Again, I'm not sure if, if this is genuinely a rage bait or not. But if it is, it is one of the stupidest things that you can do in content creation. It's a double-edged sword. You're not creating a community. All you're getting is people that hate you. And you think you're getting views? Not every view is the same. People are actively going to worship on your downfall. Right? And I hope that this is not a rage bait. But at the same time, if it's not... That that implies that you're actually stupid and you didn't understand the whole story. And maybe there's no reason to get this heated over an anime. That's right. At the end of the day, we're just watching a bunch of fucking JPEGs move on the, stream, on the screen, right? 
But at the very least, you could try to appreciate what the story is trying to do. And I don't think you understood what ReZero is. All the reasons why you say ReZero is bad is the reasons why it's good. There was not a single point where you came up with a direct example from different enemies of things that they did better. All you said was just repetitive and it was monotonous and the writing was bad and it was just chopped up. But you failed to understand that the monotonous, the repetitiveness is the regression mechanic where Natsuki Subaru, the flawed individual, goes through these different runs to learn from his mistakes and overcome them and be better and he moves forward. And it's a very triumphant feeling. Yes, he has very lows. There's been no other anime, you know, main character, like I said, that's, I felt like, you know, even showed a face like this. It is actually crazy that a main character could make a face like this. But I respect an author that's willing to show a story where the main character falls this low rather than have a perfect main character that can just solve everything without have any, any difficulties, right? And at the end of the day, you just wanted to see the perfect runs, right? Anytime he glazes re-zero, it's just the perfect runs. But you don't even understand or can appreciate why those perfect runs are good because you fail to understand why they even exist in the first place. This is pretty low effort rage bait. And if that's not... I'm sorry, man. This, this video was more suffering. Watching this video was more suffering than actually watching ReZero, bro.